Well, not all art can actually be seen by the naked eye. Uh, now, when I first saw this, I thought this is a hoax. I just couldn't mm. believe it would happen. Uh, micro sculptor Willard Wiggins' art is so tiny, it can fit in the eye of a needle. It's so eye-catching, it's currently on a national ad campaign. Willard Wiggins actually slows his heart and sculpts between beats to create these tiny treasures. Seemingly big problems become so much smaller. Even more staggering, he uses a fly's hair off its head as a paintbrush. Willard joins us now. This is just incredible. It truly is. Thank you very much. How did you How did you get into this artwork? It started when I was five. I used to make um, little houses for ants because we used to have a little dog. It dug a hole in the ground. The dog did, and all these ants came out. And I thought the ants were homeless, so what I did, I started making little houses for ants. I used my dad's razor blade and started slicing up these little splinters of wood and constructing these, these little small houses. And then I started making the ants furniture because I thought they needed somewhere to, you know, sit. And then I, you know, I got carried away. My, my mother saw saw what I did and encouraged me and told me one thing. She said, the smaller you work, the bigger your name. So school was difficult for me because I had a learning difference. I couldn't read or write very well, you know. To this very day, I've got that problem. But I've educated myself up with it on a different level, on a molecular level. So how, I mean, physically, how can you possibly do it, even mm. hold something small enough to work? I mean, Ali's got a needle. You've brought this needle in. Mm. We can, we're not even going to be able to show it to you in a camera. You can't, camera. You can't so it. How do you physically do this? Well, what I, what I have to do, I have to make my own tools, microscopic tools. So if you imagine an acupuncture needle made into a pair of uh, tweezers, thinner than that, like a bee sting almost. So I cut the end of the needle off, bend it and sharpen two ends, squeeze it together. I've got this microscopic pair of tweezers. In the other hand, I've got a syringe you know, the ones that they use for diabetics, and the, the aisle, in, in the actual end of the syringe, I smashed a shard of diamond up and put it into the end, and it, it, was, it broke off, and it looked like a little bee sting type of thing. So what I do, I, 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 um, I hold, with that hand, I hold the material down. Say it was a, a piece of Kevlar or nylon, I'd hold it down and I'd hold my breath and start to chisel away very gently, working between my heartbeat till I get the shape. You hold your breath? I hold my breath and work between my heartbeats, so I slow my whole system down. Mm. I normally work at night to avoid any vibration of traffic. It's it's uh, sort of a... Uh, it's, it's not pleasurable doing it, but when you're finishing, you, you get this, this sort of... Uh, you know, the result is fantastic because you know that you've done something you know that no one else can, can understand. You've done the smallest sculptures in history, you know. And this is uh, a journey that, that took me to, to where I am today. It, uh, years and years of keeping still. Uh, I, I must be, uh, well, I am the most patient man on the planet right now. You know? Easily, so. Yeah. Uh, and you're, so you're in the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah, I've got the world record, yeah. Oh, let's have a look at this. This is, this is a, I think we've got a picture of what you've got the Guinness World Record for. It's a hair, it's a human hair. This isn't it, that's still in the eye of a needle. We'll just see it in a moment, we'll be able to bring it up. Yeah. Um, it's a human hair which has a picture of a motorbike on. It's, it's not a picture of a motorbike, it's a sculpture of a motorbike. Sculpture. Oh. It's made from 20 it's, it's 24 it's karat gold. It, yeah, it measures two microns, smaller than a blood cell. Have you ever lost a piece of art? I've been hailed for my own art. I was going to say, you'd have been hailed. be so <laughs> angry with yeah. yourself. Yeah. But, I mean, you sell these for what? Huge amounts of money, yeah, given right. the, their uniqueness, 120,000 bucks or something. Or well, well, what it is, you see, it's like this. It's the smallest, biggest artwork in the world. It's small, but the impact knocks you out. It's like the punch you don't see is the one that knocks you out. That's what they say. And my work is, 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 is much bigger than something big because we underestimate things that are small. Human beings believe that because something's a certain size, we accept it. But what I've done, I've brought people into another world. I've explained to the world that the smallest things are the biggest things because we all come from this molecular world and we straw. And, I, and what I've done, I've educated them to let them realize that this is it, you see, because when things are small, because of the forces between the atoms, they can't break down and they're much stronger than something big. And that's what makes it so unique and so different. That's why people that have the microscope in their house and they can see, and it blows people's minds. Even kids, the Queen has got one of my pieces. I was finishing. Sir Elton John, I heard. Yeah, the Queen, uh, I had a letter from, from the both Queen. queens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it took them a crown on the head of a pin and she, she's got it in, in, in the palace. We're not absolutely fascinating. It's a privilege to meet you.